In this presentation we're going to look at how to test normality for a data set. So the version of SPSS I'm using is version 19. The data set I'm using is called simple1.save and I'm in particular I'm going to look at the variables x, y and z. So here is the data set now. There's x, y and z and what we're going to do is test if these um, uh, these uh, variables, the, the observations for each of these three variables are normally distributed. So what we go to do is we go here to analyze, we go down here to descriptive statistics and what we go and press on is explore. So analyze descriptive statistics and explore. So let's click on that. Now so what we do is again actually I'll just unselect that. So we select our three variables x, y and z and we put them in the dependent list. The factor list we can ignore for this particular instance. So uh, the uh, what we go now is we look have a quick look at statistics here, descriptives. Okay, we'll leave that. We don't need anything else here, so but we'll put in descriptives. Plots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select histogram, which is fairly useful, but also Shapiro as a normal normality plot with tests. So this is in particular is what I'm going to use clicking this option here. So uh, options that's about uh, missing values so we'll leave that. So I, I'm going to display both the statistics and the plot so I'm going to click both. Okay now here's the output here. I'll just make that a bit smaller. No. Anyway, so the uh, we have the data sets there x, y, and z. Well, and there's the descriptives, statistics. Okay, so it's fine. Uh, but what we're particularly interested in here are these tests of normality. So we have the Kolmogorov Smirnov test, or Kolmogorov. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that, and the Shapiro Wilk test. So let's remind ourselves quickly about how to interpret those tests. So we have the two tests. Kolmogorov Smirnov test and the Shapiro Wilk test. So, what we're looking at is the significance value, and in particular, if we get a very small value close to zero, apologies for that typo there, a very cl uh, small um, value that's close to zero, the data set is considered not normally distributed. The Otherwise, if we get a relatively large value, for example, 0.2 then we would assume that the data set is normally distributed. So what do we have here? Let's look at the two tests. Now more, most of the time the two uh, outcomes of the test should be agree with each other. They don't have to have the same numbers but uh, 0.2 and 0.36 we both consider these to be quite large p-values. So in this case the data set X is, is normally distributed. Uh, for data set Y not point not not five and not point not not. Again, in both cases we have a value close to zero. So we assume that y is not normally distributed. Uh, the z is just the same as x. Both of the values are p uh, both of the significance values are quite high. So in that case, we would assume z is normally distributed. We can also look at the histograms here. This is the histogram for X. Uh, do we sort of see a symmetry? Do we sort of see a bell shape there, roughly? Yes, we do. So that sort of accords with the notion that it's normally distributed. We can also look at the uh, QQ plot. Do the dots follow that trend line? Yes, they do, for the most part. So again, normally distributed. Uh, let's look at the one for Y. Here's the histogram for Y. Uh, you sort of see that the skew, there's a skew there, very much uh, skewed towards low values, skewed to the left. That means it's not symmetric, it's skewed. So automatic, oh, you'd automatically think that data set cannot, should not be normally distributed. We could also look at the uh, QQ plot. We can sort of see the trend line here, but really those dots, those points on that uh, plot do not really follow that trend line. There's a sort of bow-shaped effect. So that would sort of uh, go against the notion that that data set is normally distributed. Uh, X and Y should, or the Z values are, should be quite this, pretty much similar to the X values there. That we have a sort of a bell shape there roughly, 
and also the dots follow the trend line. So that is the end of our presentation. Uh, X and Z are normally distributed, Y is not normally distributed.